Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, friends, as I alternatively like to call you. Let's turn off for some reason. What the heck? Unbelievable. I don't understand what's going on right now, but I can't turn off the autofocus. Great stuff. Oh, well, I'll turn it off for the other scene. Anyway, before we get into things, um, <laughs> geez, that's ridiculous. All right, so just moved into my new apartment. This is the first stream. First Rhino review from it. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, this is, a new, this is my new surroundings. I got the kitchen back there, and then I got a hallway leading to a bunch of stuff over there. And I got a lot of boxes that I need to uh, put away. So, that's mostly what I wanted to say is welcome to the uh, the new apartment and going into the game. So, again, we're going into a, a game that I have not been, uh, I have not watched yet. I really enjoyed the ideas the idea that I have of not watching the game beforehand and then going over it at, like together rather than me being as a teacher uh, I think that's worked well so about the state of the like uh, state of these the series basically I really enjoy what I've been doing and basically how I've been doing it so uh, if you guys have any like have anything that you guys want to see more or less or whatever any comments let me know but overall I think this is going very well except for this auto focusing camera like what the hell is this look at that I didn't even move it just does it on its own this has got to be like unwatchable for you <laughs> uh, but anyway so anyway I, I really enjoy what I've been doing I think the the, the sh time that I'm shooting for about 30 to 45 minutes per each episode has been just like spot on I get to go over everything I really want I think I keep it in a manageable time to watch like if you want to improve this is what you watch because I get to go over things in the time that I want to. I don't really have to like rush through and figure out what I do and do don't want to talk about. I get to just talk about everything throughout a game. So overall, I think everything really in this series has been going great. Heck, I might even be able to up it to three times a week soon because I'm really getting into the groove of things. So thanks everyone for continuously watching and submitting clips. Uh, the only yeah, that's the only thing is that guys, I really like. I need any clips that I can get, like any any games that I can get. So please, if you guys have games, just send them my way. Uh, I really want to pick the best games for you guys. And if I only get like five submissions, I can't really pick the best game, you know? I get games where people are like, there's it's a 3v4 because a guy goes like 3 and 15. Or you go 21 and 2 and I can't go over those games, guys. So please, send me good games. Or send me games and then I'll pick the good ones, you know? <laughs> so, end of the game now. Boom. Alright, let's make sure the camera. Properties. Why is it saying it's not the life cam? I'm so confused. Hold on a second, guys. I just want to make sure it doesn't continuously autofocus. Autofocus off. Apply. Okay, good. Alright. I think we are good now. Didn't tweet the stream. I should do that. You're right. Alright. All right, but let's get into this game. I will tweet it out. We are going over e penguins and go. All right, so pretty casual start here. Went for the sniper. This seems like matchmaking gameplay. Yes, he went for the sniper, and his teammate went for it. I like how he played it slow and didn't just get it and run away. Shooting the barrels, all right. I don't. I don't think you can ever get a barrels kill here. <gasps> no, good attempts. But like he seems, he seems lost right now. Okay. That's a hard position. Your team's all dead. You kind of want to make a play. I think he should have just crouched a little bit harder. Maybe sat bottom rail. And then you could have made a play off of that. For any questions that you guys have that aren't specifically about this game. Uh, just wait till after or uh, until my next stream or something so I can answer. Interesting shot idea to throw a grenade. Usually you throw your grenades in this position when you're like not feeling confident. And so to throw grenades in that position is a little weird but I didn't really mind it. And then a the guy spawns bunker or something. Messes everything up. Overall could have been played a little bit better but no big deal. Alright, so off his spawn, he's going barrel side because his teammates top rail. I like the snipes one change up. He gets, yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. This is something that uh, you you won't get to notice too much in these games. 
but I really like this. So I think people get into a groove of they've got to go nest or they've got to go towards barrels, and then once they get there, they can start pushing out. And that's a that's a good idea to have, right? Except if your teammate's already there, then you can start making this this team oriented push, all right? So if you have if you're if you're stuck at carbine, if you're coming off your respawn at carbine, and your teammates already barrels and your teammates already nest, that's when you can go snipe hall, like snipe hall to white hall to snipe spawn, uh, or mid cat to white hall, and then doing that you can tra like you can transition from anywhere on the map to a different spot. So you'll notice that he goes snipe spawn, and from snipe spawn here, let's even like free cam this up. Right, so from snipe spawn, you can easily go, oh I'm top rail, I can I can pick this guy off by jumping to this area, right? Alright, so yeah, you can go snipe swan, you can pick off the guy top rail, you can go whitehall and help your team, uh, you can finish off basically anyone. So if a guy po pokes out nest bridge and your teammate backs him down, he's like, one shot going engine, you can then stop him from going back to like engine, uh, or you can again go top rail. If a guy ends up being top rail one shot, like your teammate here gets into a battle, uh, then you can help him out. So if you want to be like, uh, like a help to your team, you go into the middle of the map. Once your team's already surrounded the outside, this is the the idea of a good push is that, like, you start on the outside, you start like making your way uh, as far as you can around the outside. So on Eden, you can do the same thing. You can go all the way inside the tower, and then once you're inside tower, then you can go catwalk. And then once you're in catwalk, you can do other things uh, rather than just going catwalk. Because then a guy inside tower and a guy blue window can shoot you. Um, it also spreads out your team really far. So look at look at where his team's at. Like it seems like they're not in a really good position here, right? Like they're barrels and nest bridge. But because uh, because they're pushed up on the outside of the map, they can end up helping each other a lot easier. Uh, the penguin, penguin, and frog can go wherever they want to go because their teammates are pushed so far up. So that's just some stuff to talk about because of these uh, smaller plays. He gets into a fight and dies. But overall, that's just like a net positive, right? He's making space for his team. Maybe his team can do something. Gets a kill. Gets a guy one shot. I mean, that's that's the what happened in the end. But that's not the idea that happened. It's like he put himself in a really good position, so that if uh, even if his team doesn't really help him out that much, he's still doing a lot for his team. I'm trying to get into fights now. This is good. Ah, I didn't know that. That's. Ooh, let's talk about this. All right. So this is a little picky, a little picky. Come on, spawn already. There you go, penguin. All right. So, if you want to be a very, uh, like, a very good player, you have to like take into account everything that's going on on the map. You can't just say, "Oh, I didn't know he had this weapon," because look, you hear scatter shots going off to your left, right? You see a guy on your radar to your left, but because you're so focused on this kill of barrels, you don't think about there's this guy here. So because this guy has scattered bottom, like bottom cuts, I think he's even he could even be weak. Uh, yeah, he's one shot. Look at that. Uh, you could like, I think you could know this if you just like thought about it. Oh, that guy was fighting the guy b cuts for a little bit longer than he should be, so he could be weak to my left. But instead, you got focused on this kill, and then even if you don't want to fight either of these guys. You can go back to top rail, and then from top rail you can fight the scatter guy. If you get top rail first, he can't jump up there. Then you're in this weird position where this guy bottom rail can't do anything. You're top rail, you can't do anything, rather than just being bottom rail and top. So this is pre actually, I think that was just a bad play rather than being picky, because you're just giving up so much control because you didn't think about this guy uh, having scatter there, even though you knew he had scatter there, you know. You knew. You should. You should have known. Camo's yeah, upstairs. At it. Go for it. No way. Ah, Camo, you saw it. They got it now. Right, he ends up going down, but I think, I think that him staying alive there could have been dead, like super bad. Routine. Didn't realize there was a guy at engine. Again, could be bad. Right, let's talk about this. So again, let's just talk about this whole sequence of events here after the camo play because there's a guy at engine and Penguin doesn't know about this. There's also a guy at bunker and he doesn't realize that a guy spawns bunker. Uh, I understand it's 
kind of uh, hard to do in solo games. If this is solo, I don't even know. Uh, but watch. You hear plasma casters, you see a guy die from a plasma caster, you hear that the plasma caster shots were down, were on top engine. You, I'm, you can pretty much de de determine, you can determine that the shots were from engine rather than from nest bridge area. So then you should know that there's a guy there. Second of all, look at the radar right now. So frog is spawning and another guy is spawning at the same time. Yeah, you're so messed up. So two guys are spawning right now, one on each team. When this guy doesn't spawn on his radar, right? So w when the when your guy spawns on their side of the map, because now all, everyone's alive on your team. In a second. Right now. Right now. All right. So once you see all three guys right here, uh, and you hear a guy running up your stairs, yeah, you you heard that, right? You heard that? That was a guy running up bunker bunker stairs, and uh, you should be able to tell this is happening, right? And that is super picky. <laughs> so, I want to say, like, you should know that there's a guy coming up bunker stairs and you should be able to see on your radar. That's a little bit picky, but at the same time, this is stuff that you have to be thinking about when you're going through games. Like, uh, that's not my teammate that spawned there. And then you'll get a free kill. And then you'll be like, God, I'm so much better than these guys because in this position, they wouldn't have noticed that a guy spawned bunker stairs. And so in order to be, like... In order to win games, you have to be better than your opponents. And in, order, and in order to be better than your opponents, you have to realize the small things like this. And you'll get free kills. Ends up not mattering, but in several other situations, it'll matter. Right? Right. Right. <laughs> Alright, so blocking bunker. I think he could have gotten, he could have gotten top rail, but... Uh, stylistic differences that aren't uh, really talkable about. Alright, so here's the position that you want to use radar from. Alright, snipe's coming up. I think... Interesting. There's a guy like bottom rail area on his radar. Uh, so right here, snipe's coming up. If anyone's going to get top rail, they have to appear on radar. If you sit back here. Like, if you sit on this corner, you see if they come on radar, and then you get a free, like, e either nade or you pull out your AR faster than they do. Uh, but yeah, just reacting late to the, uh, to the blip on the radar, right? That's why he's dying. I'm going to be super petty about all of this today. Actually, I think I'm going to be super petty like throughout the rest of this series uh, that I'm doing because I think that that's something that people just don't quite understand is that you have to be like, you have to be on top of everything if you want to be a very strong player in this game. So you know there's a guy bottom rail. You get some shots on this guy going into nest, but then there's a blip on your radar and you don't realize it. He gets three free shots on you. You could have had first shot with your AR out if you would have just seen the blip on the radar first, right? Right? Guys, pay attention to everything that's going on in the game. Use your sounds, use your radar. Make sure, like, all right, don't even look at your radar. Just have, like, a, have, like, the bottom corner of your eye just, like, it's there. If anything appears on that radar, I see it, right? Right. So, so far, he's had, like, He's played all right. He's done like he's moved around the map fine. He's in, he's controlled top rail. He's gone snipe spawn to help his team. Like his overall movement in this game is pretty good, but he's not. He doesn't have that fighter instinct that a lot of other players have in this game, where you can understand like or you react to stuff so quickly. Like look at this. Look at this. Hold up, boys and girls. Like all right, this is what I'm talking about. Some players just have this killer instinct where stuff like stuff happens in games and they'll react instantly and they'll take care of anything that goes on the map they'll control this area for years and some players they, they have this objective mind where they'll they can uh they can do what it takes for their team to win they can pull the flag they can put get put themselves in positions they can support their team really well but then they don't have the killer mind they usually have one or the other from what i've seen and then it's like a mix of both um but this is one of the situations where he's done a lot of good things but because he doesn't have that killer instinct that uh, that he could have, he's not getting some of these kills. He's not reacting well enough for his team. So when he when he sees this guy in bunker shooting his teammate, he doesn't react. Right, right. So there's a guy crouching SMG. That's fine to not notice that. Get into a little bit of a scrap here. But once this guy shoots up your teammate, Elk Joe. One, yeah, 13. 
and you don't react to this. Look at that. Who's that? Like, you just look bunker stairs. Your team, like, why is there an SMG going off at bunker stairs right now? What do you, what? What is that? So what I've noticed so far is that if if it, anything's not directly hitting you, you don't really you don't really notice it. And of course, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so that's just what you need to like. I don't know if it's like not focusing in game, like going into this game just like relaxing, sitting back and playing some Halo or what. Well, even so, some of these some of the stuff's questionable, but uh. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm noticing so far. Like, overall, his, his movement's been great. Look at this, controlling top rail again. He knows where he wants to go. He knows where the power positions are. There's a flag going on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just... He's 2, 8, and 5. Again, this is a solid 2, 8, and 5. And by what I mean by solid is, like, he's still doing a decent amount for his team. Obviously, he could be, like, 8, 8, and 5, but... Oh god, the game's starting to lag. So yeah, again, blocking bunker. I don't think this is too necessary. Uh, they did get one kill. Alright, alright. So again, sitting top engine is a really good position to be. Alright, so in this position, his idea, like, what should be going through his mind right now? It should be, like... I'm watching this area while also paying attention to my radar while also listening for stuff to be going on right now. So if his teammate, who was sitting here, just gets into a fight, then he pokes out into this angle and starts shooting for him. And then once that guy backs up, you back up. And then once the second guy comes out, then he comes out. But at the same time, he's watching a uh, Whitehall area. And then if a guy goes Whitehall where his team needs help, he can go back like this. Or he can also go snipe swing. So sitting top rail there is like a really good position because you can do so many things. Oh, this theater lag's killing me. Nine and six, but honestly, it's just like a fi fine four nine and six gameplay. Again, just taking a little bit too long to recognize what's going on in, in the game. Notice how long it takes him to jump back, jump into bottom rail, because that I think that's the reason he goes down. If he jumps faster, he can then turn. Oops. Uh, if he jumps faster, he can turn and grenade a lot sooner and block off that path, and then his opponent can't do anything. But because it takes him that extra half second to be able to turn and fight, it makes the battle basically impossible because he's taking too much damage. And then the same thing here. He had shot two, three times, and then he reacts, but with a thrust. If he reacted earlier, then he could have gotten into bunker and stayed alive. And these little deaths really, really matter in this game. Like, maybe not specifically this game. They are still winning by five. But they could be winning by ten, and then against a better team, you're going to be winning by two. Because you're reacting faster than you normally would be. But again, like... By no means am I saying he's a bad player, because he's, like... He understands what he wants to do in this game and, and like where he wants to be and where he wants to go and why. But uh, yeah, just missing a little, just missing up these fights a little bit. Good shots there. Also, would have been fine with him backing down and staying alive in bunker. Would have forced two guys to come towards him, but he takes the challenge and wins it. I think it would have been a safer play to go into bunker, but uh, in order to. Uh, <laughs> be happy with this game. Can't take it. Can't be s too safe. Oh, Kenja! No! Oh God! Next stream with a ninja on. Who's that? Eljo? Eljo? All right. So my biggest harp that isn't on the on the uh, overall killer instinct. I'll talk about in this game is the fact that he's taking everything a little bit slow. He knows where he wants to control, but he's just going there a little slow. Like he's like blocking bunker spawns, but they've already spawned like two seconds ago. Um, 
going for camo again a little late. Still a good idea to go for camo, but just taking it a little slow. Could be a little bit faster with everything he does. He's in this good position. Ooh. This guy on your radar. He popped up on the radar for like a split second at snipe hole. He jumps up to snipe hole, he gets two kills here. He takes it super safe though. Which I don't really agree with, but ends up working out. Decent job staying alive. Got here, good job. Good man, good man. Alright, you can sprint, you can sprint. Alright. Stop, stop here. Alright, so here's something that I just want to talk about a little bit. Uh, when there are three dead and you see the last guy live and you're collapsing on him, just sprint at him and kill him. Don't be like, oh, I have camo, I can't sprint, guys, right? Uh, no, you could already be like halfway back to top rail right now, but instead you're st still in bunker with camo, which is running out and scatter. In this position, camo scatter is not the greatest. Yeah, you want to get to top rail with this. Sniping sniping with a uh, scatter in your back pocket and bunker is just way too difficult in my experience. It's either you hit the shots or you're in a lot of trouble. So it's a good position by him to get to barrels. Then I guess the game just ends. It's great stuff. So this one is a little bit of a fast replay. I think there is a lot of stuff that I I talk about going into this game. Hmm. Should I do a second one? Should I do? I think I should do two tonight, guys. So thoughts? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Six twenty-three is way too early to end it on. So let's recap this game. Any questions that you guys have on this specific game? or on the game, or on this series in general, let me know. So, recap the game. He has a good understanding of where he wants to go, and I think I talked about talked about that enough, about why, and how he can help his team. And I think him controlling top tower in this game was really like his focal point, and it helped his team out a lot more than just like meets the eye. Because being top rail stops them from being top rail. And if you stop them from being top rail, simple stuff. Simple halo, right? So I think that that's something that you want to look for more in, in these gameplays. Is like, wh where's the power position on the map? And do they do they control it? Do they let their teammates control it? Like, you can see that that was a support player's game. You can see he was blocking spawns. He was controlling strong points of the map that you just don't get kills in. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of things that he could be doing better, right? So, I think that I think that was a great game to go over. Uh, just as a support player, again, a, a support player's game. So, with that, it that's going to be it for the game number one. I'll get into game number two here in a bit. Uh, yeah, let me just go get some tea. I'm gonna put the overlay back on. <laughs> and be right back.